thank you, thank you. Um, I'm Giuseppe Marullo, a PhD student uh, from the University of Pisa, and I'm going to present you the work uh, with, uh, which I worked uh, with uh, Professor Bettini and um, Our research topic is uh, in welded joints under multi-axial loads. Uh, in some previous works, we presented the results of uh, in-phase and out-of-phase loads to our weld component. Uh, now, in order to compare the effects on fatigue life of different histories of torsion and bending loads, we are uh, working with block loads where we actually separately uh, torsion and bending. Um, in all these cases, the damage is calculated uh, uh, thanks to the minus rule. Uh, the linear damage accumulation rule was firstly proposed uh, for uh, variable amplitude loads, uh, but its use is extended uh, by several codes, also in case of multi-axial loads with uh, constant amplitude, but uh, different kinds of loads acting at the same time. Uh, so here we have uh, an outlook of, of all uh, the tests. Uh, we have uh, in-phase, out-of-phase, and uh, two kinds of block loads uh, varying the, the load sequence. In, uh, in the first case, we have uh, uh, first uh, bending and then uh, to, the, to a fixed amount of the fatigue, uh, the fatigue life, and then torsion till failure of the specimen. Uh, a second kind of uh, test, is simply realized uh, changing the loading order. So we have first torsion and then bending in failure. This is the specimen we are uh, talking of. Um, it's a pipe to plate joint and the two components are fixed uh, to a fillet welding. Um, the pipe has uh, a diameter of 64 millimeters and a thickness of 10 millimeters. The plate instead has a thickness of 25 millimeters and the, the nominal dimension of the welding is 10 millimeters. Uh, please note the chamber uh, near the welding area where we have a slip in the inside of the plate which is uh, welded also. And uh, this realizes a small chamber here um, that we filled uh, with the pressurized air and this, uh, this allowed us to monitor uh, the presence of a to the thickness crack, which is the failure criterion we choose to utilize. utilize. Uh, the plate is welded uh, to bolts, uh, to, bolts uh, to the bench while the load is applied uh, in this part uh, of the pipe. Here we have a picture of the loading apparatus. We have two independent actuators, here one here, one here. Um, so um, uh, giving a, given a value of the two loads, we are able to apply uh, both bending and torsion um, and we can also apply in-phase and out-of-phase loads uh, with any uh, phase angle between the bending and torsion moments. In these pictures we have uh, the loading apparatus. Uh, here we see the supports that uh, prevent the vertical load to act on the specimen. Uh, and we can see the lever arm that connects uh, the specimen to the two actuators. In, on the left hand <coughs> side, uh, we have uh, the, um, the crack monitoring uh, detection system. Uh, so in this part of the specimen, we have, um, uh, it is connected uh, to our pressure uh, dial system, and we have a pressure uh, uh, monitoring uh, system. Uh, basically, when uh, a, crack, a crack appears in the specimen, 
the, the pressure goes down and so we are able to stop the test. So uh, we have uh, uh, two, uh, this, uh, this one is the normal uh, stress on the wet zone and this one instead is the shear stress. Uh, we can decide uh, any kind of uh, uh, sinusoidal form for these two loads and any uh, phase angle between the two. Uh, uh, so uh, we fix these constants here. Uh, uh, we, from that we are able to decide the two loads uh, 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 of the actuators here and all uh, these parameters here can be decided based on the constant we want for the loads and from geometrical uh, um, from the geometry of the specimen. Uh, for a more detailed uh, description of the mathematical uh, equation, you are referred to the to the paper in, in the end of the page. Uh, this is a resume of the in-phase of out-of-phase tests. Uh, we choose to apply two different ratio of uh, sigma and tau, uh, of, uh, zero, uh, 0 point, uh, point 88 and 3.25. And we also apply the, the loads with two different uh, load ratio, 0 and minus 1. In total, we have 26, uh, uh, 26 tests in phase and 20 tests out of phase with a phase angle of 90 degrees, which is thought to be the most damaging situation. Um, for the block tests, instead, we um, uh, took the, resu the results from an axial test and we decided uh, to, uh, to utilize a ratio between uh, uh, sigma and tau of 0 0.88 and a stress ratio of 0. We imposed a life of about 1 million cycles in torsion and then with this uh, assumption and this other two equations we were able to decide the, the loads to give to, to our tests. We also decided to, uh, to have two different uh, lengths for the first block of 0 0.3 and 0 0.45. The second block, as I said before, it was the tip phase of the specimen. Here we have some pictures of the mechanism of failure of our specimen. In bending, um, in this side, we had different kinds of uh, failures, starting from several parts of the weather the zone. In torsion, instead, we had uh, mostly failures from the red route uh, with the classical uh, uh, rooftop uh, shape. In com uh, under combined uh, or block loads, we generally had uh, failures from the weld root and the shape was quite uh, simple without the, the roof. Here we have the results of the block tests. In this graph on the vertical axis we have the total damage according to the linear damage relation rule. And uh, in red we have the bending load and in blue we have the damage produced by the torsion load. So the first group of three um, tests has uh, the first block load of 0 0.3 in life in bending. Uh, and it was uh, tested in torsion till failure. The second block has um, uh, the second three uh, tests have the first block of 0 0.5 also in bending and then torsion tip failure. 
and so on. Um, the marked line uh, is uh, the damage equal to one, which is usually the, the damage to failure according to the linear duration law. The results of our tests, uh, as you can see, we, we found out that uh, most of the specimens um, endured the damage greatly uh, bigger than unity, till uh, in some cases also bigger than two. We found, found no relevant sequence effect because there is no not big uh, difference between the, the different uh, blocks. And we also observed that the scatter, the dispersion of data is quite big even compared uh, to where the joint uh, the multi-axial uh, combined load or uniaxial test. So this is our, our other results. Uh, the green ones are the one I just told you about. Uh, while the red ones are the results of in-phase loads and the blue ones are the results of out-of-phase loads. On the vertical axis, we still have the total damage according to minus root. As you can see, um, the in-phase test uh, showed an average damage of 0 0.5, which is in good accordance to the suggested value from the International uh, Institute of Welding. The out-of-phase loads uh, um, showed instead uh, an average damage of uh, more or less 0 0.2. Uh, also, this value is in uh, good accordance <coughs> to other tests performed by other uh, researchers. While the block uh, test uh, showed an average damage of uh, more or less 1.8 which is much more. Uh, so the conclusions from the block tests, we have uh, almost the test with the damage greater than unity, and in some cases greater than, than two. Uh, we found no relevant uh, sequence effect, effects in our test, and we had a great scatter uh, if compared to the same results uh, with different loads. Comparing the results from in-phase, out-of-phase and block loads, we, were, we are able to say that uh, in-phase and out-of-phase loads shows uh, damage smaller than unity. In particular, in phase, uh, the damage in phase is almost 0.5, out-of-phase is uh, almost 0.2. The block loads instead of uh, uh, are greater endurance in damage, uh, more or less 1.8. Um, our activity is, is still going and we are performing tests with shorter block lengths and more blocks. So we have more combinations of uh, more possible combinations. Thank you for your attention.